Focusing on habitat and of course our uh, international news reporter Kailit Kumalo is in Pretoria where the Human Settlements Department is expected to officially open the United Nations Habitat Conference and uh, this of course to focus on um, an inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable environment in which everybody essentially has a conducive place to live. And uh, just focusing on also um, Kailit uh, where the Minister uh, Mamulo Kokubai, uh, basically um, about, uh, I think it was yesterday, if not the day before, was talking about how slums, for example, are a breeding ground for social ills. And we see this. We live in these communities every day where the social ills are exacerbated because of the living conditions of people. And this conference, of course, meant to address some of these social ills. Well, absolutely, Sakina. Quite a myriad of challenges really facing the slums. And obviously now the decision makers are looking at more ways. So they are recalibrating the plan at disposal. But it was quite important because earlier on we spoke to the Human Settlement Department's international relations head and she was saying it's quite important to all intents and purposes that they do gather here and make sure that they refine their plans. And we do know that uh, this is also done also alongside other very important global plans, uh, for example, around the sustainable development goals. Like you just alluded, that uh, there's quite a number of aspects that must be prioritized to make sure that the slum dwellers as well are not left behind, especially because we know that urbanization is a mega trend according to the UN Habitat and really posing quite a number of challenges and uh, there's quite a, a lot of people who are involved in this particular conference. You do have civil society, you do have the activists who are really at the forefront to make sure that settlements and slums are transformed and we see the acceleration. But Sakina, let's hear now from Kirsten. Of course, she's with uh, the UN Habitat. So Kirsten, I mean, let's look at your area of specialization. You're responsible for informal settlement, you know, trying to transform them to a better living conditions. Obviously, I mean, there are best practices all over the world, but also, I mean, these challenges are always persistently there, obviously driven by urbanization, among other things. Yeah, thank you very much um, for bringing this up. We have one billion slum dwellers today and three billion by 2050 if we don't take action. So we have a tripling, and that means 183,000 housing units every day that we need to produce. So we don't have one solution, we need several solutions, we need diverse solutions, we need to act now. So this is really a call for action and asking governments to create integrated policies that create systems for connecting to the urban poor, to create inclusive cities. We say we want cities for all with an integrated um, development framework and we need partners to come in and ship and this is not something that can be achieved alone in isolation. This can only be achieved when we all come together. Today every fourth person lives in the city and, uh, and the city lives in informal settlements and slums. So really the action is at hand only eight years to go until we have the sustainable development goals to be implemented. Um, we are in the decade of action, so it's time to translate the goodwill into actions on the ground. And what's your message to, to the government, to the decision makers? Obviously, we do know that the issue of the limited resources, the you know, competing priorities in so many areas, but also we're just talking off air that, you know, these areas are very intertwined with sustainable urbanization and many other important areas. But uh, what, what's your clear and call to the governments to make sure that, you know, the issues of service delivery are fulfilled? You know, currently in South Africa, there's a concern around water shedding and many other concerns. But uh, your key message to decision makers? Yeah, the key message is really to to start acting in the sense of providing services on the ground, as you were saying, and this through multiple partnerships. It's very important to also have community-led activities integrated in uh, public planning and, um, and also service provision. We need private sector to come on board and also provide solutions that are affordable, e equitable, really talk to the needs of the urban poor and partner together to deliver at scale. And um, 
yeah, for us, there are really two key messages. People need to be in the center in the sense of we need to work with people to design services that are really meeting the needs and are also sustainable owned to create the feeling of belonging and also, you know, um, create jobs, have a uh, dynamic local economic development environment, because from there many business initi initiatives can grow and also the mind shift of we can do this together instead of just waiting for and creating more and more pressure also on governments but also other actors to come in. And obviously during the course of the morning you're going to sign an M MOU with South Africa around making sure that uh, you know there's deeper partnership collaboration in so many aspects. Maybe just before I let you go you also want to set up an office that is going to be directly working with South Africa. Yeah, that would be our dream, to be here and work with all the stakeholders that are there. You have such a rich stakeholder landscape here. It's quite unique and I feel we don't need much. We just need to sit around the table, have the same vision and put the finance in the right places and we can make quite a big difference. And we're so pleased that South Africa is ready to champion this and bring this culture also to the global level. Thank you very much. All right, Kirsten, remember just before I let you go, how are other countries doing? You know, I mean, this is a, it's a global, it's a global phenomenon where the, the issue of you know mushrooming of the slum dwellings and the informal setting of such a kind but uh, how's the world doing in making sure that we deal with these issues because obviously this is exacerbated also by you know the growth of the population and many other areas as well yeah, thank you. The world is not doing so fine. That's why we have these big numbers. It's one of the SDG targets, one out of nine that is uh, lacking behind, where we really need to have more efforts. And COVID-19 has particularly impacted urban areas and the urban poor. So we need to accelerate, and that's really also the call. But of course, there are governments, champion governments, and we count South Africa to be one of them, that have really, um, since the last 20 years, um, committed and tried. It's just not yet enough. We need to accelerate. And some countries are now here listening and wanting to also put the annual budget allocations and, and also, let's say, the national programs in place to react to this urgent call. All right. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Of course, Sakina, that's Kirsten Surma. She's with the UN Habitat. And we know it's one of the very central pillars within the United Nations family in terms of the changing of the special planning. We do know with South Africa, it's still a fundamental issue to make sure that the new settlements really are accommodating uh, people in terms of making sure that they are closer to areas of work, but also they do have the amenities and many other important areas as well. Indeed, Kailish, there's such an important discussion, as are many of this kind. You know, when we talk about the sustainable development goals, as your guest also alluded to, and one has to ask sometimes whether countries simply pay lip service to these or whether there is actually an absolute intention, intentional will to address some of these socioeconomic ills. Uh, but, of course, it all remains to be seen. Staggering those numbers, a billion slum dwellers across the world, one billion, and that number expected to rise to about three billion in the not too distant future. And that is something that we really need to wrap our heads around. But thanks so much, uh, Kylie Claire Kumala is our international news reporter out in Pretoria. And this is, of course, where the Human Settlements Department is expected to officially open the United Nations Habitat Conference in a short while from now.